So here is the Z, and we have the camber in the rear is now matching the camber in the front. The wide body kit is done and on. There's been so many things that have changed with this car uh, during the course of getting the rear camber to match the camber in the front. Now, everything has been pushed and pulled. There's uh, it's you know there's going to be a lot of questions. I think you've been asked multiple times like how how you've gotten the camber to where it's at. It is custom built specifically for this car. It's not like he went out and bought a part and said, "Oh, I need that you know that camber arm," and then it does it. Everything's custom. What what kind of camber are you running right now? What is it? It's negative twenty uh, square all N around. Negative twenty all the way around. I'm curious, what is the pillars? Because it almost looks like it's got to be close. I don't know what the pillar. That visually, that's what I was going for, is to match the angle of the pillars. If you look at it from the front, it's perfectly lined up with the pillar. Nice. Okay, so the other thing that did not that really happened when the camber was set that we weren't kind of planning for is. If you see here how high the bottom of the, the wheel is off the ground, it does have a very high stretch, low profile tire, but because of the angle, what is it, about five inches mm -hmm. from the bottom of the ground up to the wheel because of the angle of the tire. So underneath, there's, like you're only touching there in the back, but because of that, it has pulled the rear wheels out, and now uh, he's dealing with an uh, axle stretch. So there has to be, are you putting a hub in? Is that what it is? There's axle spacers that pushes the axle back towards the diff where it needs to be. Okay, so the rear wheels have actually splayed out from where the axle is. There's a stretch. The boots are actually stretched and puckered because of the length of the space. Now, this isn't done yet, uh, there is a Sudani stretch on the wheel. So you see this gap here between where the tire is and the edge of the wheel, the lip on the, the, the rim. That stretch is actually going to be on the outside of the over fender. So to do that, there's going to have to be a spacer to pull the wheel out so that at the top, the fender actually sits down between the tire and the the wheel. So to do that, there's gonna be, actually, you're gonna to have to cut the over fender up, right? Yeah, it's already, it's radius up an inch. It'll probably have to be cut a little more, but I, that's my next step is dialing in the fit and I need to get it jacked back up, figure out what size spacer I need. So you've actually, doing all of this, it appears to be lower than it was, but the car's actually a little bit higher. Uh, the space underneath, if you look underneath the car, the space there where the tome comes down to the ground is, that's, what, an inch and a half? And before, it was probably closer to three-quarter of an inch Yeah, it, it, at it its lowest. So even though the car appears to be lower, the suspension and everything underneath is actually a little bit higher. So this should be a little bit more... Uh, road friendly, barely, I'll but you're going to lower it back down? I'll put it back to where it was. <sighs> anyway, um, the adjustment in the front, the front's going to have to be raised. There's no way around it because that, that whole wheel is tucked pretty far. And if you're going to, you're going to, Jesus, how, how much of a spacer are you going to need? Like an inch and a half, two, two inches? Two inch probably. Two inch spacers to pull the wheels out so that that fender sits right there underneath. But uh, rather than ra raising it, I'll probably just cut the fender more. The fenders are radius upwards. It visually uh, raises the part without raising it. True. Um, the other thing that once he started to get the camber in the rear, with custom welding and starting to stretch the components that uh, when you get to a point where you're stretching and welding in on aftermarket components,
to take it beyond what anyone ever expected the car to be able to do. Uh, it comes, the, the amount of shift that you get in everything is crazy. So initially when the rear end was adjusted to get the camber correct, the toe was thrown off so hard, like you couldn't drive the car because how, how bad was the toe in the beginning? That was partially my fault. The, it has aftermarket camber arms, toe arms, and upper control arms, but the two lower arms are both extended for more camber. It was at negative 14 before I extended them. Now we're at negative 20. But I, my measurement for the toe arm was way off and the toe was about three quarters of an inch off on both sides. So I actually had to have them shortened a little bit to be able to align it. There's a lot of unknowns when you get into fabricating parts that are already aftermarket because there's very few people that have done it. There's no information on it online. It's a lot of trial and error. Yeah, in trial and error when you're dealing with something like this uh, gets to be not only expensive, but uh, just time consuming. Because it's not like you make an adjustment and put it back together. No, it's you have to tear the whole car, break it all down, tear the suspension out, re-weld, or start over with new stuff. Uh, especially when it comes into like the fenders. Like he's actually got, there's another spare set of fenders up there. Cutting these fenders back. I mean, once you get to that point, like right here in the rear, he's already started to cut the over fenders. Once you, it's, I mean, it, you can say like measure twice, cut once, but uh, that's permanent. Like the, it, it, you can't add back. Like once you start cutting your over fenders, like this all right here, this is all fiberglass wide body. So once you start cutting that up, which like right now you see this, it was probably down to there, wasn't it? Like, it was tucked in two and a half inches before. Yeah, so cutting all that up to make way for the wheels um, it's, I mean, that gets to be, it's not only scary, but like the front fenders are also cut, uh, and that's sheet metal. So, and that's not even finished. So he's going to have to cut this up more because this is going to have, we want this out on the outside of this. You can see on those fenders how big the arch was before you cut them. Yeah. If you look here. I mean, the arch here is about the width of my thumb, but these are stock fenders and the arch is almost twice that width. So that's all been cut off here on the front. The purpose of radiusing out the front was to help with turn radius. The bumpers radiused out some too, but uh, without doing that, there's there was zero turn radius. They're still very minimal, but it's drivable now. Yeah, I've I've watched you have to do like a five point turn to get out of a driveway. Yeah. So, yeah, this is uh, slowly turning into a trailer thing. Just just letting you know. It's okay. it's okay. All right. Well, that's the the build as it stands. I'm excited to see that Sudani stretch on the outside of the fender to see what it looks like. Thanks for watching. If you haven't noticed, my YouTube channels have expanded. Subscribe here for everything automotive, but make sure you check out my other channels as well. A couple are for gaming, and my cringeworthy series is great for a few laughs. Subscribe links are right over there.